welcome to the course on introduction to electrical engine. Today, we would like to discuss lecture 3 on analysis of DC circuit, the part 1. Well, we would like to discuss with the outline of introduction, we will discuss voltage and current sources, passive sign convention, series and parallel connection of sources, sources transformation and we would like to have some exercise and numerical analysis followed by references like. So, starting with the introduction of today about on electrical circuit. So, electrical circuit seems to be everywhere. The typical example here electrical circuit in communication as you can see in the mobile and electrical circuits in typically in different part of the uh, integrated electronic circuit. Then the electric circuit in hospital system uh, as you can see here the different devices connected to the uh, typically with the personal computers. Then the electric circuit in transmission system which consists of insulator conductors. Then the electric circuit in transportation system and you have a large number of auxiliaries electric circuit with different kind of motors as you can see used for typically in a, a today modern electric vehicle with the like a or even your normal uh, four wheeler or electric car. Uh, with the different appliances like maybe e shifter, seat positioning, power gate, then turning cover seat, EV lock charger, window lift, sunroof slider, door lock, uh, deployable door handle, electric mirror, wiper, uh, washer pump, hand pump display like e shifter. So, there are number of circuits which are connected with the same battery in the uh, your this electric vehicle like simply the two day electric car like. Of course, uh, the electric circuit is also there in aircraft system which consists of total console as you can see from the inside how it look like this aircraft system and then typical electric circuit in robotic system and the robotic arm or different parts of ro robotics electric circuit in that. Coming to analysis of circuit implies that the finding voltage across element of the circuit as you can see here typically we have a source the battery here and we have a couple of bulb which are connected in series. So, this we call it like a total as a electric circuit like um, then we have a finding current through any uh, element of the circuit when we are connecting in uh, typically elements in parallel across the a voltage source like a battery here. Then the analysis so in circuits you can call it modern trains are powered by electric motors and their electrical system are best analyzed using the AC or phasor analysis technique and uh, knowledge of circuit analysis enable one oneself to use circuit simulator developed for student to learn analog digital and power electronics. And typical example is your circuit presentation is switch mode power supply which are power used to power your personal computers as well as the uh, many electronics gadget like printer, scanner and other digital meters. I mean we use those kind of switch mode power supply which have a circuit inbuilt into it. Then a DC motor which is powered normally by DC source I mean like uh, which have a couple of electrical circuit in a sense that it has a field winding I mean normally connected in front with the source and you have armature winding which consists of resistance inductance and the armature of the DC motor. Then you have a typically a iPad charger with internal circuitry I mean that also normally we have the charger either by a power source or from AC supply again through switch mode power converters which consist of I mean the input supply with the different elements including the flyback transformer as well as the uh, filter capacitors and then the load I mean or you have a like typically a single phase inverter which normally we use in your most of the homes also as well as used in UPS. So, it is powered by DC and then you have a this uh, inverter using the solid state devices like DG, IGBT we call it in the solidity by transistor as well as the diodes anti parallel diodes to give you AC output conversion from the DC source like. Then we have a single phase diode based rectifier which convert DC into AC to feed the uh, DC circuits I mean used for many uh, I mean re realizing the virtually the volt DC voltage source with the help of a filter at the output like. Then we have a like a DC DC you can call it a step down converter it is also called buck converter. So, we have a DC source and we want to realize a low voltage DC source with the help of this. So, we do the on off and off chopping in that and the output is fed through inductive 
filter to the output capacitor which powered the DC load like um. So, these also have a you can call it is a total electric circuit which consists of linear as well as non-linear element as we discussed in the last class like. Then of course, we have a lighting system with the series connection the either like in India we have a 220 volt system and of course, uh, and North America we have a 110 volt system. So, you can connect to the bulb in series, but the disadvantage is that none of the bulb will glow due to break in the wire. If there is no return path as you can see break here, so none of the bulb will glow and that because of this reason we connect this all typically I mean the lighting system in parallel with the supply of 220 or 110 volt system or DC supply virtually in many applications have been earlier in the electric in the trains also. So, if wire there is a break in wire only one bulb will not glow remaining will glow. So, rest of the bulb are on except the parallel path break will break in the circuit like then you have a lighting with circuit representation. So, you can have a parallel connection of the bulb. So, normally you will find in the household supply also you connect all the loads in parallel because they get the same voltage from typically or I have given you example earlier of a electric car where a lot of electric gadgets or motors or uh, for different purpose are used. So, they are connected directly across the battery all are connected in parallel and here also all the lamps are connected in parallel across the battery like common. But you have a series connection of light we have already discussed. I mean like if there is a breakage in somewhere either one bulb or defective or there is back then none of the bulb will glow. But here in typically parallel connections of light bulb only if one is defective only that will not glow, but remaining will glow like I mean also. Well, coming to analysis of circuit the linear circuit analysis forms the base uh, basis for many subsequent electrical engineering courses and the study of electrons relies on the analysis of circuit with devices known as diodes and transistor which are also used to construct power supplies, amplifiers and digital circuit as we have given the photograph earlier. And the skill which we will develop are typically applied in rapid math methodic fashion by electronics engineer. Uh, now, coming to let us say voltage and current sources of different types. So, here we have a classification of electrical sources. So, we have independent source and uh, of course, two kind of source we call it like voltage source and current source and we have a dependent sources also which are classified in four categories. We call it like current control voltage source in short we write CC VS or voltage control current sources to VSCS and current control current source to CCCS and voltage control voltage source VS VC VS like common. So, dependent uh, sources we divide into four category of course, in dependent sources we divide into uh, of course, many ideally we say that in nature we have a independent sources, but uh, in practice I mean none of the source really is independent source they depends on one to another like we will discuss of course, in the next slide like. So, coming to independent versus dependent sources there are element in which the voltage is completely independent of the current or the current is completely independent of the voltage and these are termed as independent sources. And the special kind of source sources for which either the source voltage or current depends upon the current or voltage elsewhere in the circuit to so, such sources are referred as a dependent sources. So, we will give example like a typically here as a independent voltage sources where we have a symbol on the left side with A B C uh, D C voltage source symbol then the battery symbol and A C voltage source symbol like on the right side we have a circuit symbol of independent voltage sources. So, which we have a like a typically uh, the different kind of uh, voltage sources like um. So, an independent voltage source is characterized by a terminal voltage which is completely independent of the current flowing through it that is about independent voltage source. Well, the independent voltage source is an ideal source and does not represent exactly any real physical device and because the ideal source could be theoretically deliver an infinite amount of energy from its terminal delivery of the infinite current at a particular constant voltage and this idealized voltage source does However, furnish a uh, reasonable approximation to several practical voltage sources. Well, you can just say how DJ ideal or practical voltage sources and how DJ dependency comes into these practical circuit. So, you have a, a typically voltage source which is feeding a current to the uh, uh, load with the internal resistance 0. So, you will see with respect to the your load current the voltage will remain constant irrespective of the typically how much current you are drawing from the source. So, that is we call it like a ideal source. 
ideal source equivalent circuit and characteristic as you can see and practical voltage source equivalent circuit and characteristic. So, normally any, any voltage source including your battery have internal resistance and you have a series resistance typically with that and because of this series resistance when you draw the current there is a some voltage drop across the resistance. So, the voltage across the load certainly will be affected I mean uh, by this internal resistance. So, your voltage will be decreasing by increasing the current. So, this shows in a practical circuit that you have a some dependency depends on the your typically on the load that the voltage will vary like that is the meaning like what we can say in a what the non in a practical system makes difference from ideal to your practical system. And coming to this independent current source, so we have a current simple for dependent current source as a arrow with typically in the circuit and we represent this as a IS as a current source. So, for independent current source the current throw uh, the element is completely independent of the voltage across it. Well, giving an example again for ideal and practical current sources. So, here we have a current source and well the you can call it current feeding to it with a different voltage will be at current will be constant. So, there is I mean in ideal current source uh, that is equivalent circuit as well as typically the characteristic, but in a practical circuit we have a like a some internal resistance again I mean that is equivalent to a current source. So, you have a some resistance parallel to the current and now when you will be drawing current to the load there will be some current drawn current will be flowing through this shunt resistance whatever the value of this shunt resistance is, but some current will be drawn out of I. So, I out and I will be certainly differing in these two cases. So, certainly there is a decrease in the current across the through the load I mean because of this resistance I mean internal resistance of the source. So, this is again in the practical system you can call it there is some dependency and remain there because of non ideality or practically of the this current source typically like um. So, the we can call it voltage and current sources. So, there are typical voltage and current sources. So, typical example voltage source are battery as well as the diesel generators like um. So, battery is a DC source and maybe diesel generator can give you the AC voltage like um maybe for single phase or three phase. And the current source here we can practically shown as a symbol as a your current symbol with a series inductor. I mean if you have a DC voltage source and you put a series inductor it behave like a current source because current cannot change quickly when you have a series inductance in the circuit. And up to some extent solar cell can act as a current source up to certain extent like um, so that we call it like a typically I mean a, in a nature as a part, part of characteristic of solar cell is a current source like. But otherwise there is no other kind of current source in nature like. So, coming to now typically dependent sources here we have a symbol for typically of uh, with the boxes I mean for the voltage source as well as for current source. So, symbol here dependent voltage source as a uh, rectangle and dependent current source as again rectangle, but uh, with the arrow and in voltage source it is a plus minus sign we normally by write V. So, dependent sources are useful in modeling circuits such as transistor operational amplifier and indicated circuit. Well, dependent sources are usually designed by diamond shaped symbols as we shown above by uh, yellow box with the red color boundaries and voltage source comes with the polarity of plus minus in its symbol while a current source comes with a, an arrow irrespective of what on what it depends on like. So, you can just see here the dependent sources typical example for here the four different kind of sources are here. So, here it is like you, you have a typically a current source which depends on the cur some cu current in the some other circuit chi called chi k i x similarly here the current source which depends on voltage v z with x and again a voltage source depends on some other voltage k v x and again the typically another voltage source which depends on the current. So, the sources on the right side is a current control voltage source like as you can see here it is written 10 i in this symbol. So, you this here you can call it there is a voltage source which depends on the current in the circuit like in another branch like. Um. So, that is meaning what dependent sources. So, we have certainly a current control current source then voltage control uh, current source that is B and the C is the your voltage control voltage source and D is your current control voltage source as you can see as a function of your K times Z times and K times R times the typically voltage and current like um. and here a typical the example a how the current control current source a current control voltage source is a current source where the current is controlled by some other current elsewhere in the circuit as is shown in other circuit is current is I 1 and here is in your circuit 
the current i 2 is dependent on i 1 with the beta i 1 and where i 2 is beta times i 1. So, beta is the current gain dimensions. So, this we call it certainly the current i 2 depends on the current i 1 in other circuit. So, it means this current source is a dependent current source on uh, another current source like. Similarly, here the voltage source voltage control current source uh, here the we have a voltage up, I mean in another circuit. So, voltage is a current where the current is controlled by a voltage elsewhere in the circuit and you can see the cur I 2 current I 2 is G m time V 1 and where, where G m is the transconductance or uh, in Siemens or Moho and this is virtually depends this current source depends on the voltage V 1 and this gain of transconductance like. Then we have a voltage control voltage source. So, a voltage control voltage source is a voltage source where the voltage is controlled by a voltage elsewhere in the circuit as you see the voltage V 1 and here the voltage V 2 depends mu to V 1 where mu is the voltage gain I mean so it means your V 2 depends on some other voltage which is V 1 in somewhere else like um. Similarly, we have a current control current voltage source. So, current control voltage source is a source where the voltage controlled by current elsewhere in a circuit. So, you have a current somewhere else and here in this voltage source you have a current R m I 1 with the your symbol of this one. So, V 2 is R m into I 1. So, it means this where the R m is trans resistance uh, it means this voltage dependent on the, the current in another circuit like. Well, so that it depends on explain about the current sources and voltage sources of that kind. Now, coming to passive sign conver convention system. So, here we have a convention typically that this is what we have a voltmeter or you can normally you have a kind of multimeter by which measure the voltage in the circuit. So, you have a resistance of 100 ohm where 10 milli ampere current is flowing into this resistance from coming to with the n arrow. So, voltage symbol is shown with the plus minus and the voltage across this of course, across 100 ohm if 10 milli ampere flows. So, voltage will be 10 milli ampere into 100 uh, that will be 1000 milli volt equal to 1 volt which will which is reflected in the meter. But this will be the with the positive sign because the terminal which is red terminal of the meter is connected to the higher potential because current flows from higher potential to the towards the lower potential. Uh, that is the meter read plus 1 volt as the red plus of the multimeter is connected to the positive of the resistance. And in the B circuit the current certainly move from your typically from black to towards the red and same 100 ohm resistance with the 10 milli ampere. So, here of course, the convention says that we are feeding the current. So, here uh, it is just a positive convention that is why meter is showing the minus 1 volt. So, meter reads minus 1 as the red plus of the multimeter is connected to the negative of the resistance that is on lower potential compared to the current entering from the black terminal slide. So, here you can call it uh, typically with the positive passive sign convention. The sign convention for passive components is as current flows through this the resistance when current enters into the resistance. So, the point on which enter that we call it the higher potential I mean like uh, and it goes to lower potential with the plus minus similarly capacitor uh, it gets charged from the current. So, it is also here I mean typically with the positive sign on the where the current is entering and going to out with the so capacitor charge in this polarity and similarly the current flows through the inductor. So, inductor also store energy with this polarity as, as the current is increasing from plus to minus like um, in this passive sign convention system. So, this is the kind of convention system, sign convention system we follow it. Now, coming to typically a uh, reference for, for the measurement of power reference polarity for power using a passive sign convention. So, we say I mean if current is flowing going in with the arrow to the positive terminal of the voltage. So, P equal to plus V i and this we call it absorbing the power and if we have the current going out from the positive terminal of the voltage it means virtually it is kind of the generator. So, it means it is supplying the power to the external circuit and power for the source is with the minus convention. So, according to the passive sign convention the power assumed to be positive sign when the current enters the positive polarity of the voltage across element like. Well, for coming to the typically the different cases shown here that if the two cases of elements are absorbing power of 12 watt here with the 5, 4 volt I mean it is a 4 volt is across the load and 3 ampere current is flowing with the positive one. So, 4 into 3 is the power. So, that is a 12 watt and now here in the second case also current is go out going out from the minus terminal. Uh, so, it means it was entering already again positive terminal. So, here also power is 4 into 3 that is a 12 watt only the shown direction of symbol is shown whether on positive side or negative side. 
to coming to the another side, right side of the circuit. The two cases are here, where the current is coming out from the positive terminal. So certainly it is entering, it it enters to the minus terminal. So certainly p equal to minus 4 into 3. That's a 12 minus 12 volt. Watt. And similarly, here the current in the B circuit, the current is entering with the 3 ampere current is entering with the minus uh, terminal of the voltage of the 4 volt. So it's again p equal to minus 4 into 3. That's a 12 volt. So it's supplying the power and that previous case it was absorbing the power. So that is the sign convention for power we consider it like um. So in general we consider the plus as a power absorbed and minus with power supplied and in fact the law for conservation of energy must be obeyed in an electric circuit and for this reason the algebraic sum of power in a, any circuit at any instant of time must be 0. That is the sum of the power is equal to 0. So whatever power is supplied from the source and absorbed by the load or sink I mean sum of both will be. 0 in the your circuit like um. So, coming to a passive elements there is no predefined direction of the current flow or the voltage drop and after circuit analysis if a voltage or current value is positive it means the predefined and actual directions are the same. So, for a negative value the direction are just exactly opposite like. So, for active elements we do not get to choose the direction the physical situation define the voltage current and power like. So, coming to uh, series and parallel connections of sources. So, here we have a ideal voltage source in parallel. So, we can connect, we can of course connect two parallel voltage sources are connected in parallel to increase the current rating. We only we can do that if the both the voltage source are of equal potential, like two battery are of equal potential, then we can connect in parallel. But if these voltage are not equal, we cannot connect in parallel because there will be large circulating current and there is a chances in the battery can get a heat up and draw the very large current even you are connecting parallel battery of two voltage level. So, we never connect of the two sources of unequal voltage in parallel hmm. that is about the DC sources for you. So, two ideal voltages can be connected in parallel only if both have a same magnitude. Uh, similarly, for ideal voltage sources we can connect them in series. So, two voltage source are connected in series to increase the voltage rating if they, if they have a typically the right polarity. So, you have a I mean with the same polarity so it goes V A plus V B and if polarity is opposite they are connected V A minus V B that is this but you can connect them because the current flowing in both the circuit can be the same like um. So, the two ideal voltage source connected in series can be replaced by a single equivalent ideal voltage source by algebraic sum of both the voltage source that is equivalent to ideal one equal to. Similarly, the ideal current source can be connected in series I mean like uh, only when your I 1 is equal to I 2 uh, and when I 1 is not equal to I 2 you cannot connect them in series. So, two different ideal current sources must be must not be connected in series as it violates the Kirchhoff current law. Well, the ideal current sources can be connected in parallel. I mean with the summation so two ideal current sources connected in parallel can be replaced by a single equivalent ideal current source by algebraic sum of the both the current sources as you can see here. So, both current are positive so this equivalent source will be I A plus I B and when the current is a positive in the two circuit the equivalent circuit will equivalent circuit will be I A minus I B with the direction of I A the dominating source like I mean over here. Well, here again the series connection of voltage sources can be replaced by a single source. So, we have a three voltage source, two with the positive sign, one with the negative sign and the sum of bits with the polarity of the dominant one you can call it upper positive negative and the equivalent I mean voltage source will be V 1 plus V 2 minus V 3 like. Similarly, for current sources also we can connect them in parallel and equivalent is parallel current sources can be replaced by a single source and that is with the same direction as the dominant one because two are going to be opposite up and I 2 are going negative. So, that is equivalent is your going up I 1 minus I 2 plus I 3 because I 1 and I 3 are positive to up and I 3 with the minus sign of negative like. So, voltage sources can be connected in series and current sources can be connected in equivalent to a parallel source like. So, the coming to the non ideal or practical voltage sources in series parallel. So, practical sources can be combined in any manner whatever required. So, two practical voltage source can be connected in series can be replaced by a single equivalent voltage source by algebraic sum of both the voltage source and the equivalent resistance. So, you have a two voltage source where their internal resistances V 1 with the R 1 and V 2 with the R 2 
and this can be represented and voltage is V1 equal to V1 plus V2 and resistance is R1 plus R2. So, that can be represented equivalent to a one source of which have a voltage source V1 plus V2 and their internal resistance can also be combined as a R equal to R1 plus R2. Well, for the practical current sources in series parallel, I mean like a practical current source can be combined in any manner whatever requires. So, two practical current sources connected in parallel can be replaced by a single current source. So, two current sources are here which are in parallel with the I1 R1 internal resistance and I2 R2 and where the addition of two currents equivalent is I equal to I1 plus I2 and can be represented as a single circuit which have a current equivalent to source I, I equal to I1 plus I2 and two parallel resistance of course, equivalent resistance is R1 into R2 upon R1 plus R2 parallel resistance of the two are equivalent. So, it means two current sources connected in parallel can be represented as a single source of equivalent current and equivalent resistance is like, but you have to certainly follow the rule of parallel law and series law. So, coming to with an example, the opposite voltage polarity sources are same current flows in the direction. So, you can just see here series parallel voltage source placed by a single source. So, here you have a two voltage source with the opposite polarity and then you have a two current sources with the same polarity with the two resistances which can be these two series voltage sources can be represented as a single voltage source with this polarity final polarity. So, 14 is opposite polarity 32 plus 32 volt with the positive polarity and equivalent comes finally of 14 volt difference of the 2 18 volt with the polarity of 32 volt same and then of course, you have a V 2 across the 40 ohm that is not going to change and the two current sources which are in same direction. So, they can be represented as a equivalent current source of summation of two currents 2 ampere plus 3.5 ampere. So, it is a 5.5 ampere in series with the resistance of 20 ohm with the current flowing through typically of I 1. So, you can say this I 1 is nothing but now 5.5 volt and the voltage across V 2 will be now a typically of 18 volt. Now, the same voltage polarity sources and same current opposite sources can be also presented here. So, you have a two voltage sources of same magnitude of 32 volt 14 volt they are of same polarity uh, connected in series. So, now voltage source will become sum of both will be a 46 volt with the same resistance of 40 ohm and current typically uh, current are in opposite sign. So, you can take two current with the same equivalent current source with the difference of 2 and of course, the sum comes 3.5 minus 2 that comes equivalent to 1.5 as a current source and in series with the 20 ohm. So, that is make equivalent I mean you can call it the circuit of the this where we are connecting parallel current sources and, and series voltage sources like. So, two or more elements in series if they are exclusively share a single mode a single node or consequently carry the same current like. So, two or more elements are in parallel if they are connected in the same two nodes and consequently have same voltage across them. So, coming to like a typically the series resistance I mean you have a voltage source with the series resistance R 1 plus R 2 having voltage V 1 plus V 2. So, you can find out typically here the voltage across V 1 will be equal to the your V into R 1 upon R 1 plus R 2 virtually you can find the current uh, this I will be equal to V, v uh, divided R 1 plus R 2 and the voltage across now R 1 you can find out the current multiply the resistance will be the voltage and similarly for second resistance you can find out again V 2. So, V upon R 1 plus R 2 is the current multiplied the resistance R 2. So, that is voltage across second resistance like on. So, now the coming to parallel connection with the node A. So, we have a here the I current in this circuit from voltage source flowing through two resistances I 1 I 2 and we can find out how the current this I is shared between the two resistances. So, we have a again typically the I mean the we have a two parallel resistance R 1 R 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2 that will be equivalent resistance multiplied I will be the voltage divided by your uh, you can call it R 1 will be the current flowing through uh, R 1 resistance that is I 1. So, it comes I 1 equal to I into R 2 upon plus I 1 similarly I 2 will be I into R 1 plus divided by R 1 plus R 2. So, that is about parallel resistance circuit how current can be find out the share current between the two resistances like. So, coming to basic circuit uh, terminology uh, we can call it having concept of node branch and loop. A branch represents a single element such as voltage or current source or a resistance in a circuit. So, here we have a circuit typical circuit with a 10 volt source voltage source 5 ohm 2 ohm 3 ohm and 2 ampere 
करंट सोर्स विद एरो तो सर्किट कंटेंस फाइव ब्रांचेस आई मीन यू कैन जस्ट सी देर आर फाइव ब्रांचेस थ्री ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस एंड टू वन वोल्टेज सोर्स एंड करंट सोर्स तो दिस वी कॉल इट ब्रांचेस एज सोन इन द सर्किल एंड वन वोल्टेज सोर्स विच इज सोन हेयर विद द टेन वोल्ट एंड वन करंट सोर्स एंड थ्री रजिस्टर्स तो दिस वी कॉल इट लाइक ए टिपिकली यू कैन कॉल इट लाइक ए फाइव ब्रांचेस एंड वन वोल्टेज सोर्स करंट करंट सोर्स एंड थ्री रजिस्टर्स लाइक इन दिस सर्किल नाउ ए नोड इज द पॉइंट ऑन ऑफ ए कनेक्शन बिटवीन द टू और मोर ब्रांचेस लाइक तो यू कैन जस्ट सी हेयर द सर्किट हैज थ्री नोड्स आई मीन थ्री नोड्स टिपिकली ए बी सी आई मीन इन दिस एट इज ऑन इन द सर्किट लाइक आई मीन ऑफ एंड ए लूप इन ए क्लोज पाथ इज ए सर्किट एंड ए मैस इज द क्लोज लूप इन विच देर आर नो अदर लूप विद इन दैट तो इन दिस फिगर वेयर यू हैव ए थ्री रेजिस्टेंसेस एंड वन टू वोल्टेज सोर्स एंड वन करंट सोर्स तो इन दिस फिगर द नंबर ऑफ लूप्स इज लूप्स इज आर थ्री एज यू कैन सी हेयर टू रेड एंड वन ब्लू डॉटेड एंड द नंबर ऑफ मैथ्स आर टू तो मैथ्स मीन्स द क्लोज पाथ एज यू कैन सू विद द रेड कलर हेयर लाइक आई मीन तो दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन मैथ्स एंड लूप्स लाइक आई मीन तो कमिंग टू द नोट ब्रांचेस एंड लूप्स हेयर तो हेयर वी हैव अगेन दिस थ्री रजिस्टेंसेस एंड वन वोल्टेज सोर्स एंड करंट सोर्स तो फाइव ब्रांचेस बिकॉज फाइव एलिमेंट्स आर हेयर एंड थ्री नोड्स ए बी एंड सी एंड दिस सर्किट कैन बी रिकॉन्फर्ड हेयर विद द टिपिकली विद द ए नोड सोन हेयर एंड बी नोड एंड सी नोड विद हैविंग ए थ्री रजिस्टेंस कनेक्टेड इन दिस डिफरेंट वे एंड दैट एंड ए वन वोल्टेज सोर्स एंड करंट सोर्स तो ए नेटवर्क विद बी ब्रांचेस एंड नोड्स एंड एल इंडिपेंडेंट लूप्स विल सेटिसफाई द फंडामेंटल थ्योरम ऑफ नेटवर्क वेर बी इज द ब्रांचेस एल इज द योर इंडिपेंडेंट लूप्स ओके एंड एन इज द योर टिपिकली नोड्स एंड टिपिकली माइनस वन तो दिस इज द रिलेशन बिटवीन ब्रांचेस नोड्स एंड इंडिपेंडेंट लूप्स लाइक आई मीन और सो वेल कमिंग टू द सोर्स ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन तो वोल्टेज सोर्स कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई एन इक्वेलेंट करंट सोर्स एंड सिमिलरली ए करंट सोर्स कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई एन इक्वेलेंट वोल्टेज सोर्स तो दस दिस सोर्स ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफन प्रोवाइड सिम्प्लीफाइड सोल्यूशन फॉर सर्किट प्रॉब्लम एंड ए वोल्टेज सोर्स इज इक्वेलेंट टू ए करंट सोर्स एंड वाइस वर्सा इफ दे आर प्रोड्यूस इक्वल वैल्यूज ऑफ आई एल एंड वी एल वैन कनेक्टेड टू द लोड ऑफ आर एल लाइक तो टिपिकल एग्जाम्पल्स इज हेयर ऑफ द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ सोर्सेज तो वी हैव ए वन वोल्टेज सोर्स विद द सीरीज रेशन across ab and this can be represented equivalent to a current source of is with arrow and parallel resistance across the terminal ab so as a ab terminal across i mean this will look into the same voltage provided vs is equal to is ir r or is is equal to vs upon r like um, so this is something how we can represent equivalent to a voltage source and current source so a source transformation is the process of replacing a voltage source vs in series with the resistance r by a source is in parallel with the resistance r or vice versa so well coming to the voltage source to a current source so equivalent current source is represented by as a short circuit current through the load uh, rl and the shunt resistance parallel to equivalent current source is replaced as a resistance in series with the voltage source so as you can see here a voltage source with series resistance rsc and applying the voltage across the load rl load which have a current I, il and this is equivalent to a current source with the parallel resistance which have a current ish and feeding the current to the load il this is only possible when you have a is equal to your vs upon rsc and rsc is equal to rsh then only this is possible to convert from one to a current voltage source to current source similarly we can convert this current source to voltage source i mean like the equivalent voltage source is represented by as an open circuit voltage across the load rl and series resistance is equivalent voltage source same as the resistance in shunt with the current source so here you can see a current source of is with the parallel resistance rsh with the have a current ish and it's feeding the current il to the load and you have a voltage source vs with the series resistance rsc as a voltage source and feeding a current to load rl load of resistance rl to il current so this is only possible when vs is equal to rsh into is and and rsh equal to rse so then you can convert this current source equivalent to a voltage source 
well here you can just clearly see that how we can transform this voltage source. So, here we have a source transformation also applied to dependent sources. So, a source to transform does not affect the remaining part of the circuit. So, here you have a dependent we have shown diamond shape can be represented as a voltage dependent sources. So, here we have a dependent voltage source with the series resistance R s. This can be represented as a dependent current source I s uh, with the arrow and as a diamond shape with the resistance in parallel. So, it is also worthwhile to consider the unusual case of current source in series with the resistance and its dual and the case of voltage source in parallel with the resistance like. So, here in figure A the volt voltage across R 2 is I x R 2 which is independent of R 1. So, the simply omit R 1 and similar situation shown in figure B arise when the voltage source in which R 1 can be omitted in the circuit for simplification I mean as a typically the voltage source or so on. So, one should keep the following points in mind when dealing with the source transformation. The resistance value does not change during a source transformation and the voltage or current associated with the particular resistance is used as a controlling variable for dependent source and it should not be included in any source of transformation. So, if the voltage or current associated with the particular element is of interest that element should not be included in any source transformation like if source transformation uh, the head of the current source arrow correspond to the positive thermal of the voltage source and source transformation of current source and register requires that the two elements be in parallel and source transformation on a voltage source and resistance requires that the two elements are in series source transformation is not possible when R equal to 0 which is the case with an ideal voltage source. However, for a practical non ideal voltage source R is not equal to 0. So, similarly an ideal current source with R equal to infinity cannot be replaced by finite voltage source like the examples convert the voltage source of 20 volt with the internal resistance of 5 ohm into a coolant source. So, you have a 20 volt typically a voltage source with the 5 ohm series resistance we can find out a equivalent current if I, we short circuit the terminal. So, V upon R, R equal to 20 upon 5 that is I equal to 4. This can be presented as a current source of 4 ampere in parallel resistance of 5 ohm which will be taking of course, having a current typical going to be 4 ampere through it giving the same voltage at the open circuit about 20 volt like. So, coming to the some theoretical questions. So, what do you mean by an ideal source an ideal model of an actual source that assume that the parameter of the source such as magnitude are independent of other circuit variable or an ideal source is a voltage or current generator independent of the current through the voltage source or voltage across the current source. Question 2 what are the active and passive elements? The active elements are delivers energy or act as a the power source while the passive element absorb energy and act as a power sink. So, what is the unit of resistance? The unit of resistance is ohm. Given the number of branches and nodes in the circuit shown in figure, I mean you can see here we have a two resistance, one voltage source, one current source. So, there are four elements in the circuit, and the circuit has a four branches 10 volt, 5 ohm, 6 ohm, and 2 ampere, and the circuit has three nodes. I mean, as you can see here, the down nodes and what is the opposite node and the typically of right side of the node. So, find the value of voltage once the source transformation is applied to the current source or circuit given here. So, it is 10 ampere current source in parallel with 5 ohm the open circuit voltage across the A B will be multiplication of both that will be 10 into 5 that will be 50 volt. Uh, question 6 once the circuit is transformed to a voltage source where is the resistance be connected this resistance should be connected in series with the voltage source and it is is it possible to connect two ideal current sources of different magnitude in series no in series current cannot be current should be the same. So, two different current uh, ideal current source cannot be connected in series they can be connected of course, in parallel. So, in source transformation the voltage source remains the same current remain these are the options current source remains the same both voltage and current remain the same of course, not none of them, but the resistance remain the same as we discussed earlier. So, question 9 what will be the direction of current be once the source transformation is applied. So, direct that current direction will be the down in this typically the circuit like. So, if there are 
three 10 volt sources connected in parallel and this combination is connected to load what will be the equivalent voltage at the terminal that will be called same voltage at 10 volts. So, coming to the sole numerical problems. So, typically with the circuit here find the uh, R E Q equivalent resistance for the circuit shown here. So, this resistance will be equivalent to first you have to connect series 6 and 3 ohm in parallel this series of typically of uh, uh, 2 ohm that will be a 1 resistance which will be in parallel with the 5 plus 1 ohm and then adding 4 and 8. So, it will give total equivalent to 14.4 ohm. Then find the resistance for the circuit shown in the figure of uh, R A B equivalent total resistance. So, here we will have a first the resistance of course, uh, connecting 4 and 12 ohm in parallel with a 5 and 1 in typically them in series with the parallel of this adding then 1 ohm of upper 1. This gives you equivalent of this circuit followed by then again the parallel with the 6 ohm and then with the parallel of 3 ohm and finally, adding the 10 ohm. So, this gives equivalent to 11.2 ohm. Then coming to this circuit find the R A B for the circuit shown here figure. So, R A B to find out equivalent. So, we have to find out first 20 and 5 parallel with the series 1 again in parallel with the 20 then series of 2 then again parallel with the of this 9 and 18 and then finally, adding with the 16. So, it comes of 19 ohm. Find the conductance equal of the G equivalent to the circuit shown here G equivalent with the 6 uh, 5 Siemens, 8 Siemens, 12 Siemens and 6 Siemens. So, G equivalent will be virtually both are connected in parallel. So, they will be connected in addition 12 plus 8 with the uh, parallel of 5. So, that equivalent and then another parallel plus 6. So, that will be 10 Siemens. Then find the equivalent capacitance seen between terminal I and B of the both the circuit shown here. So, capacitance we are finding here. So, this capacitance of course, a 20 microfarad with the 5 capacitor are in series. So, their equivalent will be of 5 uh, 4 microfarad then it will be in parallel with the 6 then further parallel of 20 and then 60. So, that is 4 microfarad is in parallel with the 6 and 20 that will be equivalent 20 plus 6 plus 4 and this 30 will be in series with the 60. So, that again equivalent will be 60 into 30 upon 3. So, that will finally, the 20 microfarad of equivalent capacitance of whole circuit. For the circuit given here find the voltage across each capacitor. So, we have a 30 volt applied to the whole circuit I mean so the equivalent capacitance here will be your 1 upon uh, para typically of your uh, sum of your coming to 20, typically 20, 60 and 30 that will be 10 millifarad and then we can have a total charge C into Q. So, that total charge will be 10 into I minus 3 into 30 that will be 0 0.3. So, there is the charge of 20 milli charge on the 20 millifarad and 30 millifarad capacitor because they are in series with the 30 volt source and crude way may be to see that the image in the charge act like current. So, since I equal to Q upon D2, so therefore, V1 will be Q1 upon C that 0.3 into this. So, that will be 15 volt and V2 will be Q upon C2 putting value 10 volt and V3 will be a 30 minus V1 minus V2. So, that will be equivalent to 5 volt. So, coming to question 7 find the equivalent inductance of the circuit shown below with this equivalent. So, uh, this we have like a resistance. So, all three inductance will be in series 10, 12 uh, typically your 20, 10, 12. So, all sum with the parallel of 7 and then series of 10 and 8, 4 and 8 that becomes 18 here. Coming to the circuit find V x in the given figure using the source transformation. So, converting the, the voltage current dependent source. 0.25 V x in parallel with the 4 ohm to a voltage source with being 18 typically of 18 volt independent voltage source in series with the converted one. So, this circuit will be with 3 ampere current source with 2 ohm uh, and again 2 ohm with the 4 ohm and V x dependent voltage source and 18 ohm and finally, this circuit becomes as a current source equivalent to dependent current source 3 ampere and another the current dependent V 18 plus V x by 4 and 3 resistance in parallel. And finally, it will be two resistance in parallel with the current source of 30 plus V x by 4. And when you multiplied the whole, then you will get the V x equal to 7.5 volt. Like so coming to example 9, they use the source transformation to find out V 0, a voltage across the 8 ohm resistance. So, you have one current source, one voltage source. So, first converting 3 
ampere consorts into parallel for the 4 ohm into a voltage source and 4 ohm and 2 ohm in series. So, this 4 into that will be 12 volt here with the 4 ohm 2 ohm in series then 8 ohm we keep parallel and then another voltage source we can convert equivalent to typically kind of current source then we add both the current sources and 8 ohm and this and finally, we can find out the current dividing into the finally, in 2 ohm to that 0.5 and then we can find out the voltage in this 8 into i that is becomes 8 into 0.4 that is a 3.2 volt. So, coming to here which one of the circuit of the following figure give V a b equal to 7 volt. So, you are just adding here. So, you will just see I mean all other are not giving. So, finally, the d only giving the typically 8 minus 1 the 7 volt like. So, I mean after printing this there are some of course, on solve problem with the answer. So, you can just try that ok 20 with parallel with 1 in series then 20 parallel then 2 in series then a 9 parallel and 9 and 18 parallel and then finally, 16. So, these are the sum of the unsolved problem which you can try I mean given number of in the same way like I mean also. So, these are the sum of the references and thank you.